Hello and welcome to Raymond Community Church and Union Grove Congregational Church's Christmas Eve service. It's a different Christmas Eve for all of us, but pandemic or not, Christ still comes. God, Emmanuel, God with us is still here. I'm so grateful you are here to celebrate with us. I invite you to take a moment, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and remember the reason that we celebrate, the fact that God is with us, that God comes to us in this small child, in one of the least expected ways to a poor working family. God comes and is with us in the midst of this all. Please join us in the call to worship. The impossible is about to happen in a stable. People who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness on them has the light shine. This is the evening when creation stood still and held its breath, for God was doing the most unbelievable, dangerous thing. This is the evening when God embraced humanity from the inside as one of us from birth to death. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Amen. This year has been full of hardship for all of us. Amid a global pandemic, the rich have gotten richer, the poor have gotten poorer. Even tonight, there are people who rest their heads on the cold sidewalk to sleep. When I think about the people of our church, I see people who have suffered tremendous loss, walk through deep valleys, and face tumultuous waters. We have all witnessed injustice. We have all known despair. 
And yet we dare to believe that God meets us here in the face of all the darkness of the world. We light the candle of hope. May the light of this candle show to all people that God is never far away. When we look around the world, it may feel like peace is but a distant dream. Conflict and violence surges through our global and local communities. Unrest and injustice seem ever present. As Christians, we are called to be people of peace, and so we will light the candle of peace. We pray that hatred will loosen its grip. We pray that swords and weapons will be transformed into, into plowshares. We pray for the presence of the Prince of Peace to be in all our hearts. May the light of this candle be a light for all nations and peoples, guiding us towards peace. On this eve of Christmas, we're keenly aware that joy feels fleeting for so many. How can we feel joy when so much about this year's holiday is so different? It feels as though COVID has sucked the joy right out of Christmas, and yet, if we but open the eyes of our hearts, we will see that joy is all around us. It's in the familiar Christmas music, in the taste of a delicious crumbly cookie, in the wonder of the eyes of small children, in the pile of Christmas cards, in the glimmer of snow, or in the love of a friend. Tonight, we light the candle of joy as a reminder that even on the hardest days, Joy can be found. May the light of this candle bring each of us a little bit of joy. Of all the things that the world can take from us, love is not one of them. As our scriptures tell us, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Love is what remains even when all else is lost. As we light the Advent candle of love, we pray for a healing of the world's divisions. We release old grudges, confess our wrongdoings, forgive our neighbors and ourselves, and boldly proclaim that love will always have the final word. We pray tonight as God's love comes down, embodied in the snow of Christ's child, that this love will knit us together, making us whole once again. May the light this candle be a symbol of how love came down at Christmas. Merry Christmas! In the midst of a messy world, God has come to us as a child. God in now, God in the flesh. We light the Christ candle in honor of this child, the Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, vulnerable baby born in a manger. His story tells of a God who shows up in the most unlikely places, among the most unlikely people, as a light in the darkest night. May the light of this Christ candle be a reminder that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness shall not overcome it.
According to Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary and he came to her and said greetings favored one. The Lord is with you but he was uh, much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her do not be afraid Mary for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give it to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born. The child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, "Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word." Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter, verses 1 through 7. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because 
he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for Mary to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. And there, in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Merry Christmas, everyone. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, 
they had known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Please pray with me. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for the birth of the Christ child, the one who changes everything. May it give us hope and joy and love this Christmas. May it fill our hearts with peace. We ask, O oh God, that you be present in our hearing again your story. May it draw us into the miracle of Christ. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if you caught it, but the title of the sermon is a nod to the show Friends. Every episode in their series was titled The One Where or The One With. And so the title of this sermon is The One Where a Little Baby Changes Everything. I always appreciated the holiday episodes, the Thanksgiving and the Christmas episodes of the show Friends. I've probably watched the series maybe three times through. But like any good show, it would start off you know, setting the plot and things would seem to be going okay. But then one by one, everything would start to go awry. In the end, we know, of course, things will be okay, but it starts off all right and then everything kind of goes amok. And if that's not 2020, I don't know what is. Everything started off all right, but then felt like one by one, every single thing started to go wrong, as wrong as you could possibly imagine. I don't know if any of us actually could have imagined how many things could have gone wrong or awry this year. But if we go into the show of Friends or any other sitcom or play or movie, any kind of story, we know this is how things go how things are structured. Things start off okay and then run amok, there's a climax, and then everything settles. But it's hard in the midst of everything running amok to trust and believe that everything will eventually resolve itself. We get to a point where we're left wondering how could one more thing possibly go wrong? How could this possibly end well? And this happens in our Bible story as well. This happens to our beloved Mary and Joseph. They start out, everything seems to be going okay. It sets us up for the plot. Mary and Joseph are betrothed. They're set to be married. But then the angel Gabriel shows up. And this is where things start to change paths a little bit. The angel Gabriel shows up to Mary and says, you are going to give birth to a child. But it's not going to be Joseph's child. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you will give birth to a son named Jesus. And Mary says yes. She says yes to this adventure. She says, I am the Lord's servant, May it be as you have said. And I'm sure this is not exactly how Joseph planned things to go. They aren't married just yet. And so this is where things maybe start to snowball a little bit out of control. Mary then, once now she's pregnant, she then goes and spends three months with her cousin Elizabeth. She leaves town and goes away for three months. The last few months of Elizabeth's pregnancy and the first few months of her own. 
But then once she gets back to her beloved Joseph, who has so courageously said yes to sticking around and living through this adventure with Mary and supporting her through this, they find out they need to go be counted in the census. They need to go to Bethlehem. And so what do they do in Mary's eighth or ninth month of pregnancy? They hop her onto a donkey and they go off on this journey. And I have never been pregnant myself, but I can imagine, well, maybe I can't imagine being that far into your pregnancy and getting on a donkey for several miles. But then, once they arrive in Bethlehem and they're there, they're being part of the census, there's a lot of people, it comes time for the baby to arrive. And yet, there's no place for them. It's at this point in the story where we start to maybe wonder, how could this possibly end well? What else could possibly go wrong? Mary says to Joseph, it's time. It's time he's coming. And Joseph, even though this isn't his biological son, he has said yes to raising him, to being his human father. And so I am sure like anyone who's about to become a new parent, he's rushing around frantically. What do we do? We need to find a spot for this baby to come. We need to have a safe place for Mary to have this child. And yet there's no room until finally a gracious stranger, or perhaps a distant family member, we don't know, someone opens their door and says, here, we have space with the animals. So you can eventually lay your newborn baby down to rest his head in a manger. And so amidst all of this chaos, eventually the baby comes. And the baby changes everything. The moment Mary hears that first cry, changes everything. Amidst all of the chaos now, here is the silent night. Here is the peace and the love born into the earth. And suddenly, everything else falls away. Here is the magic, the birth of the Christ child. Our shoulders relax. We now know everything will be okay. This is the point in the episode where people gather, it's joyous, everything that has gone wrong has still gone wrong, but we know now it'll be Okay. Everything in this moment is made right. And the miracle, the miracle every time, no matter what, in any story, the miracle is always love. Love is what shifts everything. We are reminded in this story that no matter how much could possibly go wrong. The thing that makes it right is the birth and the presence of love. And that love brings that peace, the Prince of Peace, that peace that passes all understanding. It is the light that pierces the pitch black darkness. That is the miracle the birth of love that changes everything in just a moment. And yet, we know, as in any sitcom or show, more episodes will happen, which means more things will go wrong, more things will go awry. And just the birth of the Christ child doesn't make everything else magically go away. It is still messy. There's still, there's still a manger. There's still animals and 
cows moving and then these shepherds show up or if you listen to the song that little drummer boy and I'm sure any new mom will tell you a drummer boy is probably not what they want right in the midst of the birth of their child and so it doesn't change everything that went wrong it just it makes it feel right in the moment the presence of love and we know more things, like I said, will go awry. But we also know that love will always change its course. We know that no matter what could possibly go wrong again and again, that love will always make it right. And so this Christmas, when it feels like nothing else could possibly go wrong, when it feels like this past year has run amok with us, we can trust. We can trust that every single time, love is what makes a difference. Though no matter what goes wrong, love makes it right. And so yes, we may be celebrating Christmas Eve on a screen as opposed to in person, but it is the love that connects us. Because love is the one thing that pierces every barrier. Between life and death, love is what pierces that barrier. Love is what joins us together. Love is what can make it right. And we trust in that, and we believe in that. This, my friends, is the good news. That Christmas still happens. The Christ child is still born. This little baby changes everything. And it's like when we watch reruns, we know what's going to happen. Even as everything goes wrong, we know. We know what will happen. We know the good news is coming. There will be a resolution. That is the gift and the blessing of redemption. The Christ child is born and will change things and has changed things forevermore because love has been born into our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen.
God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Jesus gathered with his disciples all the time around tables, sharing meals together, things that so many of us yearn to do again, to gather around a table with our loved ones, with our friends and our family, especially this time of year. But for now, we celebrate at the table of Christ, which is everywhere, at every table. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. And so we trust that even now, as we gather around this table virtually <laughs> across towns and cities, we trust that Christ is here at this table with us, that we remember him in the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the cup, that his salvation is always still present evermore. You, my friend, are invited to this table with everything you are, with everything that you are not. You are welcome here. In the United Church of Christ, we believe Jesus would never turn anyone away, and so neither do we. You are welcome. Our prayer of confession. God of all hope, hear our prayer. As we gather together this night, we know there are chasms in our lives, deep valleys that separate us from one another and from you. We confess we allow those rifts to grow and deepen. Soften our hearts, O oh God. May the songs of the angels, the surprise of the shepherds, and the joy of a holy family inspire us to heed your call to reconciliation, heal relationships, and wholeness with each other and with you. Forgive us, God, for all the ways we have fallen short, and remind us again of your never-changing love for us. This night, we offer this prayer of our hearts to you. Amen. God's love has no bounds, and this love comes down at Christmas time. It's a love that changes everything. It has come down for you to touch you to heal you, to forgive you, to make you whole once again. May this love bring you peace, the peace of Christ. My friends, peace be with you. Please join us in the Lord's Prayer. Prayer. Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and, and the, the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered as he always did with his disciples around a table. During the meal, he took the bread. He blessed it and broke it, giving thanks, saying, this is my body broken for you. Every time you eat this bread, do so in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and he poured it out, giving thanks, saying, This is the cup 
of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Every time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Beloved Creator, we ask that you pour out your Spirit upon these elements, on this table and the many tables around which we gather this day. May Christ's Spirit be ever-present in these elements as we partake of them, so that they may remind us that we are made one through the body and blood of Christ. We receive the forgiveness that comes and welcome you into our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. You may now partake of your bread and your cup. Please join me in a prayer of thanksgiving. Dear God, as we have shared this special meal on this holy night, you nourish our spirits with your love. We now take the light of Christ's everlasting love and share it with all the world. Thank you for the blessed gift of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh! 
O wondrous God of the stars, we come tonight with breathless wonder to see the babe who will change our lives. We hear the names, wonderful counselor, mighty God, Prince of Peace, and we are in awe. You have touched the earth this night with your unconditional love. Touch us, touch our hearts and minds and souls. May we never tire of this story. May we never take it for granted. Make this night magical again. Amen. Every year on Christmas Eve, we light one candle from the Christ candle and then share it around the sanctuary, each lighting our candles coming from the light of this Christ candle as we begin to sing Silent Night. And while that may look different this Christmas Eve, we will still light one candle from the Christ candle. And I now share that light with each of you and invite you to light your candles, trusting that the Spirit of Christ, that the Holy Spirit can reach across to each and every one of us, connecting us all as it always does on Christmas Eve. And now with your candle lit, I invite you to join in singing Silent Night.
Merry Christmas.